Hello everyone and welcome to the OASP Disciple. In this video I'm going to show you easy write-ups for the Namcon CTF. To solve the technical support challenge you just would need to join their Discord and go to this Namcon CTF general and the flag would be here on the top. For the second exercise, baby's first art bleed, you would have to connect to this server and then the server would request you a string. You could supply any string, we can supply for example A, and then it would request to give a length uh, to retrieve. And instead of one, you could give for example 200, and you would uh, retrieve more information than it's expected, and it's basically a memory leak from the server. So by reading the memory, you were able to get the, the, the flag that was loaded in the memory. The read the rules challenge, you just go to the rules, and then you can view the page source and search for the flag and you'll have a thank you for reading the rules, your flag is here. For the ash station, it would provide you a SHA-256 ash and then you could just use, for example, crack station and then you would submit awesome and um, you would submit flag awesome, you would get the exercise solved. Then for the cat key, you would get a file. And if you just perform in Linux, in this case, cat uh, and then the file, you would get the flag. In Windows, you could also open the file and you would see the flag right away. For the banjo challenge, they will provide you a image and uh, it mentions the strings command in Linux. So if you do strings and then the banjo, if you scroll a bit up, you would see the flag and you of course can also grab the flag right away and you would see it. And then in if you open the image, uh, for example in Notepad, you would also see the flag in plain text. Then for the next exercise, you have to basically convert an RGB code to hexadecimal representation. So you could just use a site online, for example, to make this conversion, and then you just copy this, and um, this would be the flag. For the way to basic, you could just uh, take this binary and then just convert binary to string, and then you would get the flag. And then the next exercise we are going to cover is bypass. This one is a medium one. They would provide you the, a source code for a web application that is running here. We can open it. It's here, we, we can upload files. They give you the source code. And in the source code for the file upload, we can see they have a deny list of extensions they are going to check. If you would upload the file and then the, your extension would be on the deny list, so if you try to upload a PHP file to be run on the server, it would not pass this filter and then it would have to be less than this size. So I noticed that the .ht access is not on this list, so we can try to upload a .ht access file that will tell the server to interpret well, to run P PNG files as they were PHP. So we can try that. So we can submit a dot ht access and then success. We, we can see it was uploaded. And then we can, for example, download a easy, simple PHP web shell like I did. You can just download this file and then you just rename it to, for example, evil.png. And then if you upload it, you would have a web shell. And here we can just cut the flag, run the command, and we would get the flag. For the next exercise, we have padlock, which is an easy reverse engineering exercise. It says, I forgot the combination to my padlock. It gives you a file. With the file command, you can see it's an elf Linux executable. And here we try to run it. It asks for a passcode. We see uh, it maybe it's four characters, but it says not quite. We can use GDB to go over And, and see what the program is doing. So the first we are going to uh, the call until 
it requests us for the information. So the fscanf, it requests for information. We supply this value, for example. And then if we proceed, uh, we can see that is doing some replaces. Another replace, another replace, and then another replace. And after doing these four replaces, it will try to check the um, uh, string length. So here it will compare RAX, which is 5, and uh, with 26 in hexadecimal. So 26 in hexadecimal is 38. So let's try to supply a 38 length uh, payload. So let's run again. So we have here a 38 ace. And if we provide 38 ace, now when it gets the string length, you can see that it will try to compare 26 in hexadecimal with 26. And now it will proceed. And then this string is loaded. M master locks aren't very strong, are they? And it seems that uh, they will call a string compare to compare what we provided with this string after they have done uh, four replaces. Uh, basically, we have to uh, land this uh, string and because they are replacing every uh, tree with E's, every underscore with spaces, every zero with O, and every four with A, we have to basically supply uh, this string. And if we supply this string next time we run it, we can now quit uh, this. And then if we run and we provide this string, it will uh, make the replaces and the evaluation and the string comparison and will provide us the flag. I hope you like these write-ups. Please leave a like and subscribe. See you on the next one.